So welcome to another Wardy's Waffle Farm update. Uh, you'll see for the first 10 minutes or so of the update that I haven't been doing a lot of farming myself because I've been away on holiday in Crete. And I've got a few minutes from the hotel that we're at, but I've also, not just uh, holiday snaps if you like, and a holiday video, I've also talking to one of the entertainment uh, girls in the hotel because her family uh, was in, has been in agriculture and she's from France and she's got some interesting comments to make about agriculture in France and the problems they have. We we also went to look around a winery uh, in, in the hills in, uh, in Crete, which is just outside Heraklion. That was really fascinating and tasted some wines. And I've also got a few clips of the hotel manager and some of the staff. And, uh, and we booked with the, uh, we've been going here seven years and we book direct with the hotel every year. So uh, please, um, if you'd like to go to Crete, uh, it's a fantastic hotel, holiday, uh, sorry, there's bungalows dotted around the grounds as, you've, as you'll see. Um, and then I'll put a link in who to uh, book with, but you'll see, we talked to some staff, talked to George the manager and but please if you'd like to go to this hotel there aren't any tour operators I don't think going uh, to the hotel but you can book direct to booking.com or or um, yeah on the on the uh, hotel website so anyway uh, we're going to also be looking a bit of a farm update and the tour um, got sugar beet field here behind me we've got some beans we're looking at also looking at some fields of wheat and just seeing how they've developed we're not combining anything for the next um, probably couple of weeks or so so we're going to look around all the crops and see how they've changed because have massively changed so anyway uh, without any more for me let's crack on with this week's update so the hotel is called Creta Beach and it's about 20 minutes from Heraklion a place called Amadara yeah. are you going that way BBC, oh, BBC. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube <laughs> we'll see you later Andreas and Connie very 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 good friends of ours from uh, from Germany so yeah the hotel is made up of lots of bungalows dotted around the gardens there's one main building with a uh, with a restaurant and bar and things and we'll just have a look around you can see by the gardens here what a lovely place it is so this is the main walkway down to the main building and these are all the different bungalows There's different standards and, and classes of bungalows some a lot better than others you see here at the minute all the beautiful flowers that are out at the moment and we have uh, the same bungalow most times we've come so this is our bungalow here with the little veranda area they've all got little sitting areas outside lovely palm tree and flowered gardens and walking now to the main hotel area and the pool just see there's the sea through there and just walking through now it's the main hotel building swim pool area through here nice big pool lots of sun lounges and then we've got the bar and uh, um, snack bar through there and and we've got the beach just out there. Oh, and here's Ron coming out the main building. This is up the steps into the area where we have drinks at night, into the bar area, but we'll have a look at that in a few minutes. And the beach just down here. And this is the private hotel beach just here. But this is the uh, sort of Bay of Amadara. So they've just started serving lunch by the look of it. Oh, and the melon here is just to die for. And this is the sitting area. We're at the swimming pool at the minute and the hotel has an animation team, which is an entertainment team. And here we have Camille uh, from France. Are all of you from France here, all of your colleagues? Um, more or less, one is from Italy and uh, Anna, she's from uh, Germany. Ah, okay, Germany great. and Greece. Now, talking to you the other day, it's really interesting. You have got some relatives, is it an uncle who's in farming or his background um, is agriculture? My grandfather used to be Farmer, yeah. and uh, I have cousins that they are working in, uh, in the farm. farm industry. And we have problems with farming in England at the minute with struggling to get labour. And you have the same in France also. Yes, it's very big, big, big problem nowadays. Yeah, and young people coming into agriculture is that a problem? 
it's difficult because nowadays they they want the government wants them to get um, to get more diplomas, yeah. but uh, so they pay to go to school. But when they they start working, it's difficult because they don't get a lot of money. So. No, yeah, difficult. It's, yeah, and also in England we have quite a lot of mental health issues and stress mm -hmm. and anxiety, and the same in France. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I know some people they. They killed themselves because they, they couldn't pay the taxes that the that the government wants to them to pay. So it's and your yeah, government your government is not supportive of farmers. They try to, but uh, you know it's there's too many farmers that they are struggling with money and with uh, they cannot anymore. So because the big uh, farmers they are coming and yeah. they take everything, and the small they. It just get what's left. Yeah, so, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. And uh, and also, in, and in England, we always look upon uh, the French as being very proactive. If the French farmers don't agree with something, they go straight away into the streets with the tractors and things. And and how is that looked upon? Is that it? because in England that uh, protests in England are banned now? Our government banned peaceful protests. Yeah, well, you know, French people they like to go on strikes and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. but yeah, it's normal for me. They go in the. In the main cities, they go in the centers and they take their the trucks and everything. Sometimes they come with their animals, like yeah. uh, cows or yeah. stuff like that. And they protest because, you know, when they want to sell something, they they, they sell something for nothing, but uh, the big industry, they are selling for yeah. more. Yeah. So yeah. they don't get a lot of money, it's, which is... And what about the cost of inputs and, and things, the rising cost of, of chemicals and for treating the crops? Yeah, well... It's getting more and more. Yeah, and fuel. And, yes. And fuel yeah, is a big course, price fuel. in France. But they're trying to make a new law to 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 make the fuel less for farmers or yeah. yeah they are, they're trying to, but. But you don't know whether we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Great. All right, Camille. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very right, interesting. Thank you. <laughs> this is one of the uh, jobs and animation team. Yeah, Camille doing the morning uh, aqua gymnast. Here we are in the bar, and we've got our expert barman, Marius. We've got Zaki's restaurant manager, and we've got George, the man, the hotel manager. We have George Parakis here, who is the Good hotel evening. manager. And I've known you, George, ever since we've been coming here, which is probably seven years, I think. Yes. You have looked after us fantastically well, and the staff here are brilliant, and everything about the hotel is like one big happy family. So thank you for enjoying the holiday. Thank you. Thank you for your visit. Thank no. you. Thank so. If people want to come from England, how do they need to book? They can book directly with us, with the web hotelier, or it's better also with booking.com. Okay, and they can send me an email to offer them my VIP service. So, so booking.com, or even on the hotel on the website. Yes, 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 of course, of course. That'll do it. So please, if you want to come, you've seen a few little snippets of the hotel. It's an absolutely brilliant hotel. We've got some fantastic staff here. They look after you unbelievably well. This is the place to come for holiday in Crete. Thank, Thank you, George. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Ronda. Okay. Yamas. Come on, Ronda, get it down yet. Ronda. <laughs> Milo. <laughs> We're just uh, waiting for Yanis, uh, who works in the reception here at the hotel, to finish his shift, which is 3 pm. And then uh, Ronda and I are going with Yanis and his wife Anna and daughter Johanna to uh, the Rakis Winery in the mountains, which is about 30 minutes north of. Uh, Heraklion, so it'll be really good uh, to go and see that and see the vines and everything. So we'll just wait for him to go and then we'll get off and, and head up into the mountains. Just look at the vines. All the flowers and plants are out in full bloom this time of year in Crete. Just vines as far as you can see. Just going in now inside. Last time we were here was 
Yeah. Along the way, five or six years ago? Yes. Just incredible. One other thing they were just telling me here is there was a big earthquake here only a year ago and they lost a huge amount of wine and all these bottles you can see here all fell out and landed on the floor. All the bottles around there and so they've now put little guards on. You can see here it happens to stop the bottles falling out but just imagine all these bottles coming out and getting broken. All these barrels as well you can see. Absolutely fantastic winery. This is just one of the uh, varieties, one of the vines, and I've got Anna here to explain it. So Anna, you say this is an older variety? Yes. That is... Uh, it was uh, extinct, yeah. and Lirarakis wines managed to revive it. Is it the, the How long word? ago? Uh, I think it, uh, 1980. Wow. So it's still, it's still, what's that? So it's still 40 years old though? Yes, yes. yes. And I think that maybe uh, we are the only winery which makes uh, a genuine Clito wine. Yeah, yeah. 100% Clito, this variety. Well, fascinating. And we will taste it. Lovely. Another little claim here, Anna. What did you say? This one, where has it gone to? Uh, this is the wine that uh, your queen drinks. Really? Yes. Well, it should be good enough for me then as well. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> And here we have a lovely little private sitting area. And we have Yanis, who has brought us here from reception at the hotel we've known a long, long while. Brought to you, Anna, and wife Anna. And every year we come on holiday, we come out for the afternoon or the day with them. Look at this, just spectacular. Oh my God. Now I'm going to sit down and taste a few of these lovely wines. Look at that for scenery. There we are, having the tasting of these fantastic wines. Food has arrived as well. And just look at the scenery. why this winery is famous. So not only famous for uh, the local um, rare grape varieties, but also from this grape variety that is called Mandilari. Um, and Mandilari is very, very hard to grow. Mm. Very hard to grow. Uh, even in uh, uh, Crete, it never gets uh, ripe, never mature uh, perfectly. Uh, so no one used to make single variety Mandilari. They blend it with other grapes just to give color and intensity to the wine. This is Connie. Hello, August. Rhonda. This is Mila. Andreas. Connie's other half. Matteo. <laughs> I'm just uh, talking to Matthias at the snack bar and we were talking about recycling uh, and the comparisons between England and Germany. And this can here. You were saying, Matthias, that you get a rebate? Yes, yes. On all the cans? You, you pay uh, 22 cent, euro cent, yeah. on top. And if you bring this back, you get the 22 cent back. Wow. And the bottle, bottles, bottles of beer, 7 cent per bottle. Yeah. Yes. And it's added on at the, when you buy the drink at the supermarket, when you buy it to start with, it's added on the price yes, of the shelf. Yes. And then when you go and buy some more, you take the empties back yes. and you get a receipt and then yes. it's refunded. Yes. Yeah. And Every supermarket uh, does this. That is fantastic. And this is what we should do in England to get uh, to help our litter waste because it uh, it's so bad as we all know. And you don't have the waste and the bottles thrown out no, the window. No, no, no. At the snack bar, we have Eftikia and Minas who have both been here seven years, the length of time we've been coming. Yeah. Minas is a farmer. Yes, you have yes, the same with you. Same, yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, yes. <laughs> with animals, with, big, with many animals. Brilliant, brilliant. Beautiful woman. <laughs> you have to care, is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Young woman, young woman. Brilliant. So we have another um, shot here. What is this called? 
Yes. What is it called? Yeah, <laughs> what was it called? Catastrophe. Catastrophe. Kamikaze. 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 Catastrophe. It's the same. So, Yamas. 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 Auf die Helme. There you go, Ronda. Wir haben alle YouTube Star. Good. Very nice. Good. Connie? Good. 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 Andrew, look. This is our holiday over. We are just saying goodbye to our German friends. They are fantastic people. We've known them since 2014. Incredible. Fantastic holiday. So fresh back from our holiday in, in Crete and the black grass pullers are still here. Uh, they've only got a day or two left, I think. They're just uh, finishing off some spring oats and just pulling some black grass in some spring oats. It's nearly getting too late, to be honest. But uh, they've had a month now here. Uh, by the time we've finished it, it'll have been about 35,000 pounds, I think we'll have spent on, on the pullers. But uh, I will just add, uh, you might think that's a lot. Yes, it is a lot, but just remember, we don't spend uh, the amount of money on herbicides that uh, a lot of farmers do. We're, we've used 30% less herbicides uh, now than we used to do. And uh, we don't use any post-emergence uh, herbicides for black grass at all, because I don't believe it works. So we, we, uh, we either round up it off if it's, if it's too much to pull, as you've seen from a video, uh, a few weeks ago or we hand pull so the black grass pullers are just in the background here just having their, their mid-morning snack we've got the welfare trailer here and uh, it's in the yard up at the heath on the light land we've got spring oats here and this is where they're just pulling a little bit of black grass it's mainly in the tram lines um, and this is the only field we've got up here uh, that's got some black grass in so i think this will be the uh, this will be the last one so just looking around some of the crops after being away for two weeks and it's incredible how uh, things have changed. Uh, we went away on the 25th, 26th of June and when we travelled down to Luton Airport and all on their own farm here, all the wheats were still really, really green. They hadn't started to turn at all and yet the hot weather that you've had while we've been away um, it's incredible now when you look at all these wheats how they've uh, how they've gone off now i think these are ripening because they're on heavy land uh, if we just look at this particular wheat um here you'll recognize this one this is one of the on the edge of the uh, the main yards just through those trees you can see we've had uh, panels down here for this sewage sludge and this is the one where somebody asked me how much we're actually losing so i measured this area did a little feature on this area um, a few videos back to see how much we were losing with putting these panels in and storing this heap of sewage sludge here. But just looking at the crop, um, the, we'll just see what it's like. But yeah, the tram line's obviously still very green. So we've got the tram lines green here. And in the crop itself, it's not ripe yet because the ears are still stood up right like that. When they start to, when they start to bend over and neck over, like one or two they're doing there, that's when it's ready, but the straw's still a bit green in the bottom. You can just see in these nodes. I'll just pull that one up, you'll see a bit better. Just see there, the straw's still a bit green where my finger is. And uh, if you to rub these out, I'm struggling with one hand, but we'll just try and pick a grain out and you'll be able to see it's still, squeeze that. We'll just squeeze that, get rid of that husk around the outside if I can do it. Yeah, it's not milky anymore. It's gone from the milky stage, so it's coming on, but they're not ready for harvesting yet, these. It's obviously the heavy land is just holding the moisture there. But yeah, still very green in the tram lines. But coming on, this is a skyscraper, a variety which is like a sort of a, a second grade feed, um, uh, or slightly better than feed rather, um, and probably attracts about a £10 a tonne premium. Uh, uh, overfeed price but obviously wheat's dropped about a hundred pounds a ton since its height we'll just go into this field so this field we're in now here is a continuous wheat it's been wheat four years on the trot one over the lane here there's the beet pad that you'll recognize now from my farm tour that's the stone from the menage uh, this field and this is green here because it had the concrete uh, sorry the, the plastic panels on for storing the sludge and this one is after beans also skyscraper very green in the tram lines as you can still see there but get out of the tram lines and it's definitely greener than that thanks nala it's great having nala back as well and uh, 
uh, she was looked after by my daughter Sam and uh, she's got a yellow lab so they had a fantastic time together yeah just looking here you can see how green that stem is uh, so uh, not even as forward as the field we've just looked at I'll just try and get a grain out there yeah about the same stage actually sort of doughy stage so nowhere near ready and very green yet so it's still some time off these uh, these wheats are and uh, but this is after beans so this hopefully will yield better than the field um, in front then another field here we've got three different wheats here after different crops which you'll have seen and the next one in front there is uh, after sugar beet and this is the one that was drilled uh, I think it was planted about the 25th of November so quite late and uh, that we did it in two halves if you remember and this one looks really well still green skylark singing above and of course don't forget everybody says there isn't any wildlife in the British countryside makes me laugh when you're out there obviously people don't get out there and hear what we hear working and living in the countryside and producing food anyway that's another story um, yeah just looking here these tram lines are still green but it's still right and it's amazing when you look at the field we've just looked at just the other side of that stone heap that was planted about the 10th of October this one was planted six weeks later and yes it is definitely greener but again you can see it's pull a stem out so you can see there we are still a bit green in the stem but coming on but again nowhere near fit yet we're not going to be combining these any of these weeks i don't think till probably uh, early august normally we start our weeks middle of august because this moist this soil holds the uh, holds the moisture but looking uh, looking good some of these crops are so i'm pleased with these again black grass free as you can see there wasn't much in here with it being late but looking uh, looking good just looking now in another crop we've got a field of barley here and this is spring barley and you can just see how green this is still a long long way off uh, being ready for harvest this won't be ready until probably the middle end of august it will be a long long while before this is ready it's still very very green as you can see we also surprisingly have a few uh, bits of wheat uh, sticking up in it you can just see there and i'm not sure where that's come from um, all I will say is though this was our own seed that was treated and, and uh, we dressed and uh, did our own seed last year and uh, and so this might have had some wheat in it last year so obviously this next year we will not be taking any seed for next year's barley out of uh, out of this field or any of our spring barley because I think there's a little touch of wheat in all of it and it'll only get worse year on year but yeah this is laureate this is variety for malting and uh, hopefully it will go for malting it's had about 130 kilos of nitrogen on um, I'm not quite sure what that equates to uh, in, in old money, uh, for those of you who prefer it uh, in old money, but uh, that's what it's had on to hopefully make the nitrogen grade. But um, yeah, decent crop, um, nice and short, it's had a growth regulator on it to keep it down and hopefully keep it standing. Um, and then we've got one of our winter bird food plots on the edge of the field here. So that's, uh, that's the barley crop looked at. Just looking at some of our sugar beet now, and again, haven't been in these for two and a half weeks, something like that. But when you start to look really, really healthy crops, I'm really pleased uh, with these. I'm currently stood on this bridle way. Sorry, this footpath goes across the middle of our field, goes across this way as well. You see, just Frank is making the way slowly in the distance. But yeah, sugar beets looking, uh, looking really good. So I'm pleased with this and uh, intercepting all the light. When you look here, you remember it established really well in, uh, in March, April time. It was coming through and it met in the row probably end of May, which is really good. But you can see these massive leaves now are just intercepting all this light uh, and turning into and for photosynthesis and obviously that's turning into yield and yes it's very dry but these roots of this crop will be going down and um, bulking up the the roots and when you see if you look down here I'll try and uncover one of these you can see now straight away that is the root there it's it's about you can just see looking at the size of it there it's probably four to five inches across so looking really well at the minute just going to be putting the fungicide and some trace elements on this um, in the next um, week to 10 days and also the uh, black grass pullers we've got you can just see there a tall crop if i just get down you might see it a bit better there we go that's what we call a weed beet and these need pulling because you've got all these seeds similar to black grass you've got all these seeds here that will drop on the floor and uh, and cause a problem in following crops we pull that and remove that but very interesting just by chance look at that fantastic ladybird on here 
obviously picking up some aphids there and we've got another one just through there where's it oh he's just gone at the back of that leaf you can just see so brilliant to see these um and this just shows the good we're doing what we're doing it's fantastic when you see that there's actually two there i think actually yeah there is and they just look like they're having a bit of fun which is great also while i was away we received a insect trap from bayer and uh, this is great that we're doing all this sort of development work and trial work uh, with companies and it's behind me here you can just see this uh, yellow trap and so i'll just explain uh, a bit about it so this is really like the old style water trap insect water trap but it's been developed and uh, and brought up to uh, uh, modern standards and really it's um it's in sugar beet at the minute here but they've uh, there's only two of these in the country we've got one here and there's one somewhere else but they've been predominantly used on oilseed rape and we're just trying it for uh, for bayer to see what we get and how it works is that that is a solar panel and if i can get this off the one hand unclip that and unclip that there you can see there's a little camera there in the middle and um, there's a uh, an app on the internet that we uh, that we use uh, I just can't quite remember the name of it uh, at the minute but there's an app we use uh, on the internet and you can look at it through your phone and see what insects you've got and there's the insects that are in it at the moment and what this camera does it takes about three pictures a day and every time it takes a picture, it puts a little square, a coloured square, around the insects and counts them. And there is also a facility within the app that distinguishes what the insects are, whether they're pollen beetle, whether they're flea beetle, um, weevil or aphids or whatever. And so we can then see uh, what's, what's in the trap. And uh, looking at this screenshot of, of the last um, uh, picture that was taken of this, this is what we've, what we've found. And these are the number of insects in it. And it doesn't count them twice because as I said, it puts a coloured square around all the insects and, um, and then uh, it knows that it's already counted those insects so it doesn't count them on the next photo. But it's quite interesting and incredible what we've, what we've found. So we'll just pop that back on there and, uh, and leave that in the crop and then we'll keep monitoring it and just see what insects we've got. But it's really good for seeing about what, what's in the crop and whether you need any insecticides or what damage the, and what particular insects there are, whether they can be left or, or, or need treating. I'm just now in one of our fields of spring beans and as you can see these are still very very green and this is a variety vespa and this is going to make seed for other farmers to to grow next year and uh, looking really well nice and healthy um, but there was quite a lot of aphids in here uh, when we were away and uh, and this is a screenshot that fred uh, the agronomist sent me uh, while we we're away and you can just see the volume of of, uh, of aphids uh, in here so they've potted up nicely. When you look at this stem, lots of pods on these beans. Huge amount of pods there. And there'll be some more pods develop at the top yet. And if we just break open one of these pods, you can see here. Let's go into there if we can. Still obviously very soft, very green. There we are, there's the beans inside. You can just see, there's a bean there. Dropped on the floor. So there's nicely forming, there's only three beans in that pod. But yes, yeah, so a look, nice healthy looking crop. Just a little bit of disease coming in the top there, but generally looking, uh, looking really good and, and healthy. We won't be harvesting for another probably couple of weeks yet. We don't grow winter barley and uh, we haven't had any all seed rape for three years, but we're gonna go back into that uh, this year. And I'll explain a bit, bit about that another day. But I think the field behind me uh, will be probably the first one that we harvest and this is spring oats. And this is the field where, if you remember from the farm tour and also last uh, February, we brought sugar beet up the here, rutted this really badly and then repaired it with the drag. And of course, we've got a field of oats across the road there that was um, sugar beet. So we'll just look around in these oats, but you'll see that they're still quite green, uh, but they'll come quickly now, but I think we should be into these before the, uh, the end of July. So looking across the field, nice, even, regular crop. Looking forward to getting into these. You can see all the oats now in the top of the ear here. But when we look, they are still, oh no, they are hardening up a little bit. There we are, we've got an oat there. Just see on the coming out the end on my finger. They are coming on, but they do need uh, the straw still very green. And uh, uh, 
I want to get some glyphosate on these to really ripen it up because it will uh, it'll use a lot of fuel on the combine chopping this because we'll chop it and, uh, and incorporate it. Uh, oat straw is very difficult to bale. It lays green in the swath for a long, long while in the rows in the trail after we've combined it. And so it's best to chop it and then incorporate it. And so that's what we'll do. But to make that more efficient and better, this green here, all this green needs uh, um, some glyphosate on. You can see even here growing away from the tram line. If you look at that, we'll just pull that one. Look at that, how green that is, still very green. So it will need some glyphosate and it won't be long before it needs that actually, looking at the condition of some of these seeds, it'll soon need that and, uh, and just help these, uh, help these crops on to ripen. But I think this will be the first one um, we get in, uh, in the combine. A few wild oats here that the, uh, the pullers have, have uh, pulled this last few days and it's just nearly getting plenty late enough now uh, for these because they soon start shedding. Uh, we'll just go across um, the road, you remember from the video in the winter, came across here with the traps and trailers with sugar beet, it was really wet and this is uh, another field of oats we've got and they're just going to come here tomorrow to pull these. We've got some wild oats here to, to uh, pull. You can just see there sticking up. We can see them with the light. Yeah, just see them sticking up there. Got those to pull. But 50 acre field here. And again, still very green here. You can see, just pull some of those. Look at that, still rank green yet in the tram line compared to outside. But even so, uh, it'll soon need spraying off and then we'll be into this hopefully within the next couple of weeks so towards the end of July so these will be the first ones that we'll be uh, we'll be harvesting so that's it for another farm update I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, found the first part interesting from Crete and as I said at the start please if you do want to have a look at that uh, hotel next year there's some links at the bottom in the description of this um, video and that will just tell you how to get in contact and how to, to book with them but thank you very much for watching hope you've enjoyed it bit of an update as well uh, from the rest of the crops you'll see the progress of where they're on they're really coming on quickly now and uh, but until uh, next time cheerio and thank you for watching